Hi, my name is Ray. I'm a South African cosplayer. I have been cosplaying for 13 years and this is my build book slash tutorial, whatever you want to call it, for how I made Molly Mock Tea Leaf from Credit Wall Campaign 2 for Comic-Con Africa 2022. It's a lot of twos in one sentence. Wow. So yeah, just like something before we get started, I actually ended up winning Champion of Needlework, uh, which is insane because I didn't even think I was going to make it to the finals, but yeah. Other than that, in areas where I don't really know what I'm talking about, I will be sending other tutorials for you to follow. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, starting off with patterns. So the patterns that I included in the downloadable file for you are photographs of, uh, or tracings of patterns that I created for myself. These are not good patterns. They are not even really functional. They do serve the purpose of showing you how to alter your patterns, roughly speaking, to be as, I guess, accurate as Molly's reference uh, shows. Starting off with our free patterns, you are going to go to Mood Society or moodfabrics.com and you're going to look up at the free sewing patterns and you're going to find a lot. Uh, you can scroll through these and see what you want and what works for you, but these are the patterns that I recommend. So the Avon's bodysuit pattern is a free pattern and it is size inclusive, which is awesome. Uh, and is with some minor alterations pretty close to what you need for a bodysuit for Molly. Uh, it also comes with a very cool uh, sewing guide to show you exactly how to put everything together. So the alterations that I would make with this one in specifically is to just simply fold it in half, copy the shoulder into the one side, leave the crotch open to become your uh, clasps and add some hand patterns. How do I make hand pattern you ask? You trace out your hand, trace out your hand on and then sew it. <laughs> There are many tutorials, I guess, on YouTube on how to do gloves. I don't know. That's just the best way that I can recommend is just trace out your hand uh, and cut off your glove or your thumb, not your glove. Cut off your, cut off your thumb. It's going to be a good mo movement. Yep. English is the language that I speak. Uh, next up for the waistcoat, this is actually the pattern that I used for my waistcoat um, with some minor alterations because I had the mock-up left over from when I made my Genya cosplay. Um, so you can use this pattern with some minor alterations, removing the skirt uh, and slicing the sleeve right down the center of the pattern here uh, and creating uh, your Molly Mock waistcoat. It is also size inclusive. Uh, and comes with a really neato guide on how to put it together. For Molly's overcoat, there are several jackets that I would recommend, but the Bridgerton uh, post that they have, it is called the uh, Hydra's Coat. The Hydra's Coat is pretty much perfect for Molly. Um, you are going to remove the sleeves, you're gonna remove the, uh, what do you call it, the, the collar, <laughs> uh, and you're gonna add a slit into the back and then you'll have a pretty decent um, Molly Mock coat. You can also lengthen it, by the way. Uh, I would recommend lengthening it for Molly. Uh, if you are a fan of lesser seams or less seams, uh, there is also the, uh, uh, what is this called? The, the trench, um, which is simple three uh, seam, uh, very, very simple, very easy to put together little coat. For the pants, if you want to make the pants, there is the Ren Jeans pattern, which is a fairly decent um, pattern to use because it is a high-waisted pair of pants. Um, obviously, just cut it uh, and make fancy little shorts so that you don't have bell bottoms that you're trying to stick into some boots. Alternatively, <laughs> alternatively, uh, go on to Etsy and just type in Molly Mock leggings or Redbubble and you are gonna find stuff that, uh, you know, will make things so much easier for you for the simple and pure reason that you do not have to make it, you can just buy it. If you struggle with mobility and heat uh, or anything like that, I would actually recommend getting the leggings. Just, just trust me, just get the leggings uh, instead of trying to put yourself through wearing quilted pants, uh, which are heavy, and uh, <laughs> are not very movement friendly. Okay, uh, looking at alternatives for the rest of Molly's stuff, starting with his wig. Um, 
If you are from a first world country, you are going to find something that you want that matches pretty closely by just uh, going on Amazon, going on uh, Arda, wherever you buy wigs from, uh, Five Wits wigs, whatever, and you're going to find something that you know will work for your vision of um, what you want for Mali. Unfortunately, uh, if you are from a developing country like myself, suffer. Suffer. Just suffer. God hates you. Why did you decide to cosplay? Suffer. Anyway, uh, basically what that boils down to is that uh, for the people in the first world, uh, if you are anywhere in a developing country, getting a wig is kind of difficult. Uh, especially front lace wigs or high quality wigs or wigs that look a specific way. Um, so, hey, um, you know, sucks to be us, I guess. Uh, if you cannot find a wig that you like, a friend of mine, uh, Kimpatsu Cosplay, Taylor has these wonderful tutorials and books where she explains how to ombre dye wigs and how to style them and how to get them to look in like specific ways. So definitely go have a look at some of Taylor's uh, work because uh, she will be able to give you alternatives to do with wigs that, you know, we, uh, yep, wig, wig stuff, cool. Uh, as for Molly swords, if you do not want to make Molly swords, there are a plethora of uh, STL files available online that you can use um, to create Molly swords. Uh, you can also purchase uh, these like 3D printed kits where the swords are already printed and you can just kind of like put them together. Uh, as for Molly's horns, um, they are, what I ended up using was the uh, Jessica Negri tutorial that she made for her fern uh, horns. I just ended up copying um, that method and created my horns for Molly. But if you do not want to make your own horns, that's cool because you can just download the files, SDL files from Thingiverse and you can print your own horns and or you can buy your own horns but if you are somebody who struggles with mobility and heat and pressure on your head uh, these are the horns that i would highly recommend for you they are the elope horns uh, from amazon now these are actually the horns that i had from my very first molly Maw cosplay uh, they're fairly uh, priced i mean they're like they were like 25 dollars for um the pair um but what made them great was that they were incredibly lightweight. I wasn't nervous that people were going to bump into me. I wasn't like, uh, I had no head pain throughout the entirety of the day. So if you are somebody who struggles with mobility, who struggles with head pain um, or migraines or just uh, sensitivity towards your head, these are the ones that I would actually recommend for you um, purely just because of how comfortable they are because they only secure with a single elastic. They're not like stuck to your head. Um, they're easy to remove um, and they're quite comfortable. So jumping into the embroidery section of Molly's coat, if you choose to do embroidery above something like puff paint or painting it on or even stitching over wool. Heads up, uh, my hands actually look like garbage because I've been doing rough things this whole week. I do apologize. Okay, you're going to need a couple of things. This is my very, very basic, very fast way of embroidery. Again, there are a lot of other tutorials online if you just look up embroidery or chain stitching or back chain stitching or uh, basic embroidery stitches, you're gonna find this. It is a fairly fast and uh, good stitch to use when doing something like this. So a couple of things you're gonna need, obviously, is Molly Mox facing fabric, which I'm just here using white so it shows up easier to explain what we're doing. An embroidery hoop of varying sizes. This is one of my medium ones. Uh, you're going to have optional choice is some beeswax, but I would highly recommend this because it helps to keep your threads uh, in order. Um, obviously, very, very different spools of embroidery thread depending on how you're going with Molly. Uh, embroidery thread and needle, very, very obviously. But then the uh, savior of my ass, I guess. So a tailor's pen is a really cool uh, water pen, basically. And if you draw on any line when you're fed up and done with it, you take some water and you just erase um, your mark. Be careful not to iron over it because the color will set. Okay, moving on to the actual embroidery. Um, embroidery thread usually comes in strings of four or six. Six is far too thick 
for something like Molly's coat, so I took it down to four and three depending on what I was stitching. This is a three uh, strand embroidery thread. So to get started, take your beeswax, pinch it into the, into the wax or your thread and pinch it into the wax. It helps keep your thread together and neat, basically. Uh, thread it through your needle and then do a tailor's knot. Now to do a tailor's knot, you are going to have your short tail and your long tail of your thread. You're going to go to your longest tail and you're going to pinch it right at the tip of your embroidery needle, just the tip, and you're going to go anti-clockwise, one, two, three, and then you're going to pinch it and pull it through. This creates a very sturdy and secure knot and you don't have to worry about your embroidery pulling through. So just again, right at the tip, pinch it, one, two, three, anti-clockwise, pinch it again, pull it through, and you have a secure and sturdy knot. Always try and start from the bottom of your fabric to hide the knot that you just made. Pull up your thread, pull up your thread, and about five millimeters away from where you're just stitched, you're gonna pull your thread back down. Then you are going to, through the center of that whole stitch, push your embroidery needle through again and again, five millimeters in, do another stitch. To finish off your stitch, you're going to do that same tailor's knot, but at the back. The difference is, though, is that when you did it the first time you did anti-clockwise, this time you're going to do it clockwise. So you'll find your longest tail, it's still hypothetically in the fabric. One, one, two, three. Pinch your needle down so that it touches the bottom and pull your needle through. Use your fingernail. It's going to help secure it. Give about a quarter inch gap, then cut it off and finish it off and then you'll have your embroidery. Okay, so everything here is available on my Instagram if you do not want to listen to me, yap, yap, yap. Uh, so this picture is actually by Dear Lord Hunter. It's one of my favorites. It's been my background for years. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Uh, so I have a sloper or a block pattern uh, for sizing for something like a simple four pattern or four, t uh, four paneled jacket that um, I use for a lot of stuff. So this was that sloper pattern and then altered for length and it was too short for what I wanted for Molly. So I lengthened it. Uh, I also have a waistcoat pattern that I ended up scratching for uh, the Genya pattern instead. Uh, and then uh, a shirt pattern, which was also just from a sloper. All right, so once we had the pattern to a point where I was happy with it, uh, I cut out the red. I searched over all of my seams, especially with the embroidery jacket because of how much I would be handle it. Um, if you do not have a serger, simply zigzagging over your um, seam or over your, your cut line would be beneficial to you, especially because of how much you're going to be handling it with your hands. Now there are other ways to transfer patterns onto fabric. Um, I did not have the money for that, uh, so I ended up uh, just drawing things on freehand as I went. This was just drawing out the design that was going to be the back of Molly's waistcoat. Um, it takes a while, it takes a lot of planning, uh, that is why I have paper pattern pieces to kind of like figure out where everything goes so that when it mirrors, it mirrors correctly. Okay, just a heads up, the blue cotton that you see in the background is a stabilizing cotton. So it is only running about to where that basting stitch is there and the rest is clear behind it. But it's so that when you put your embroider hoop over your fabric, you don't stretch your fabric uh, completely out of proportion, uh, which with embroidery is easy to happen depending or easy to happen depending on the fabric that you have or the 
that you're using. Uh, so I would actually recommend that if you are embroidering your jacket uh, and you are going to be putting it through any kind of tension hoop or um, like embroidery hoop or whatever, just baste a piece of cotton all the way around to ensure that your um, embroidery doesn't actually force your pattern piece into a shape that it should no longer be. Please be patient with yourself. Embroidery takes an incredibly long time. This clip here was sped up over two and a half hours. So, um, like I said before, I carved out Molly's belt from leather. I don't know if I've actually said that before. Uh, I carved Molly's belt uh, from leather and hid a bunch of peacocks and, uh, or peacock feathers rather and snakes and eyes in the design. It was the first time I worked with leather. Um, it is a skill that I'm happy I learned, but I'm happy I don't have to do any time again soon. Uh, dyeing leather is also very stressful to me because uh, it's permanent. It, it's on there once it's on there. If it's too dark, sucks to be you. Here we are just actually dyeing the belt. When you are working with leather dye, um, I found the one thing that has to happen is that you just kind of have to keep on moving, like you can't really stop, um, because if you stop, you're going to have a patch, so you just have to keep on going, and it is mildly stressful. Uh, leather working also involves a surprising amount of hand sewing that I was not expecting. On to the saga of Molly's horns. Um, I think I made about 11 different patterns for Molly before I was actually happy with how his horns looked. This one was far too uh, bendy for me and it was based on the Kamui cosplay pattern. I tried to alter it a bit um, and it didn't really work for me, but hey, if it works for you, that's great. So if you intend on airbrushing your Molly Mall cosplay, I would actually highly recommend it just on the side, I would recommend it uh, because it looks so cool. Uh, it's so subtle, but it's so cool. Um, I use a dark purple um, to, uh, you can actually kind of see it on some of those spaces, but like I use a dark purple to bring it out. If you do intend to airbrush your pieces, airbrush it before you start embroidery. Um, I didn't have the time because I had a very, very limited amount of time to finish Molly Mock and I couldn't wait for four weeks until I could get access to the uh, airbrush machine in my father's house. So I had to keep on embroidering and um, I had to airbrush over the embroidery and in some places kind of like go back over it. In some places it did look really cool like to have the embroidery over uh, or the airbrushing over the embroidery, but um, sometimes it just goes a little bit too dark. So um, depending on the look that you wanna go for, airbrush before you do your embroidery. So this is Molly Mock's earring. It is two millimeter craft foam that was uh, covered in a lot of wood glue to make it very sturdy uh, and then painted to have the sword design on it. For Molly's tattoos, I ended up drawing out the designs onto a dull tricot and then uh, sticking it into an embroidery hoop and painting it with fabric paint. When you paint, make sure to paint solid flat colors and then only draw on the details that you want. If you draw in your details before you paint, you're going to paint over your details and it's going to look muddy. And here is what it looked like just before stitching it together. So um, here I stitched the sleeve together. Uh, just a little tip when you're doing tattoos, um, instead of using black as your lining color, try using brown. Um, I use the Montmartre fabric markers and I would highly, highly, highly recommend them for this project. Um, I ended up using them for so much more than just Molly's tattoos uh, on his bodysuit. I used them for my face, I used them for my freckles, I used them for highlights on the waistcoat. Um, so they were definitely a must buy for this project. Uh, as you can see here, my eye is far too high up and too far back uh, and you can't really see it. So fix that in yours, kids! Just a reminder that I turned this entire cosplay out in just under three months. It was rough. It was rough. Weather your stuff. Weather it. Just trust me. Get some cheap eyeshadow. Rub it on in there. Weather your stuff. It makes such a difference. Even though you can't really see it in photographs, it just looks so much cooler. These are the moons. Uh, this is how you like, just you peel them, stick them, iron them on. This is obviously sped up, but that is how you do the lining moons. Yep, you 
Just iron them. It's heat and bond. Uh, and that is what it looks like when it's done. Yay! Oh, baby's first test pinning. So moving on to the swords, Molly describes his swords as being made from carnival glass. Now carnival glass is this novelty thing that was handed out uh, in American carnivals. Uh, I don't know if it was anywhere else, but I, that's the research I found like immediately was, oh, it's like this American thing. Um, and a lot of people collect it these days, but it is this iridescent, um, clear or rose colored or green uh, glass that was handed out as prizes. So um, to try and emulate that, I ended up making the sword blades from a clear uh, vinyl. Uh, it's a Perspex uh, that was five millimeters thick. I would in future go slightly thicker than uh, the five millimeters. Uh, this one was light enough to easily carry around. Um, it is just a little bit fragile for my uh, taste, I guess. Uh, I did actually end up snapping the sword or one of the swords uh, on the day because a guy walked into me really, really uh, badly. Uh, so now the swords are up on the wall and I don't take them down because <laughs> uh, they will break if they move. Uh, so definitely a thicker perspex for future. The CNC SVG file that you can use to cut uh, the sword blade shapes uh, is in the handout file as well as the template for the sword, obviously. Uh, for my circus carnival glass effect, I used uh, an iridescent vinyl from Cricut. Uh, here is the process of applying the vinyl. Uh, if I would not have been able to do it with my amazing neighbor, uh, she was amazing help, um, because it's a very stressful thing. And then, and then came the best part where I put on the, the vinyl, the iridescent vinyl onto the swords before I had to put everything together and look at it. Look at it! Look how shiny it is. This scratches a part of my goblin brain that I, I, I can't, I cannot describe it to you. The goblin brain scritchy scratchies happen because it's shiny. Um, so the best way that I found out to do very, very precise lines on many layers of foam is to not cut out the many layers of foam and then stick them together. No, no, no. It's to take a bunch of squares, stick the squares together, and then when you're done gluing them together, cut out the shape that you want. So uh, here you can see the uh, foam was cut out, the dark foam, and then the purple and white was two millimeter uh, high density craft foam that I then stuck on top. And then our little, our little diamond boy over here was just a piece of uh, the five millimeter foam that I then cut at an angle um, to make sure that I have little, um, a little diamond shape going on. We then primed and painted and sand and primed and painted and sand and primed and painted and sand and primed and painted and sanded until we were blue in our faces. But we did it. Look how shiny they are! Um, okay, so there was a little bit of a jump there, but um, uh, essentially, after I primed and painted and sand and primed and painted and sand and primed and painted and sand, I gave it a base coat of gold and silver. Uh, and then I used a, a watered down black to add some shading here and a watered down uh, brown to shade the gold. Uh, the reason I guess I didn't show this was because I hyper focused and then I didn't record anything and the next moment I knew it was like, oh, I should probably put this in the thing. And uh, it didn't happen, I'm sorry. But um, definitely other people have better tutorials on how to shade gold and specifically gold than I do, because I still, I'm not entirely happy with the shading of my gold. I also ended up repainting it like four times uh, after I painted it here. Uh, and a part of me just kind of wishes that I didn't, but hey. All of Molly's strips that were on his jacket were hand tacked on because I didn't want you to be able to see the uh, stitch lines. So I chose to suffer. So, um, yeah, uh, to create the patterns for the boots, I <laughs> ended up asking my neighbor to help out. Uh, I wore the boots, she duct taped me on, and then uh, when I told her <laughs> where she drew the pattern pieces, uh, and then we uh, cut them out, and then I had my boot cover pattern pieces for uh, Molly's 
Uh, so this is what the boots ended up looking like. Uh, they still needed another tier on top of this, but for now, this was good enough. Uh, as you can see, no shading, no tines, no nothing. It's just pinned into the actual shoe, but yay, shoe! And now it's time to do a silly little boot dance. Boot, don't kick things. Boot dance, yay! Uh, it was around about uh, when everything was just basically stitched together that I did a last round of airbrushing where I made everything darker and made the colors pop a bit more in some places, uh, made spots specifically look like dirt, uh, had like a bit of more splatter going on in some places just to kind of give it the look of being old, you know? Again, the man is a dirty corny. Things are gonna be dirty. You know what they say about Carnies. It's like a Rennie is somebody who works at a Ren fair, a Carney is somebody who works at a carnival, a druggie is someone who works at a carnival. Man's gotta be filthy. Uh, and here is to show you why you should airbrush. Uh, the left hand side is unairbrushed and the right hand side is airbrushed. It's so subtle, but it makes such a big difference. And then the mighty hand stitching happened uh, where everything was, I made everything look all like Dan Zoe. So the one thing that I did was I printed out these labels uh, that had the members of the 99 except for Molly and Kingsley on it. Uh, and then I handed them out to some people. Um, but the one is in the waistcoat and nobody will ever know about it because it's hidden in the lining. And here's what the actual completed waistcoat ended up looking like. And I'm actually, I'm really happy with this. This is something I would wear out just because it looks fucking dope. Remember that time I said to make gloves, you just trace out your hand? Yeah, that's you just trace out your hand. Just, just what you do, you, you trace your hand, then you stitch it and you stitch it again, just to make sure that you don't have any holes in there. And then you hand sew the rest and then you have a hand. Yay! Okay, so here was Molly Horn part two. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Here you can see um, the what I tried to show was uh, this was a <laughs> tin foil. This was a tin foil and wire horn that I then covered in rope to help be able to give it a bit of more stability. And I was what I wanted to do was to cover the foam with the rope and then have the rope texture kind of like through the foam, but that didn't end up working. So I ended up covering it in foam, then covering it in rope again, and then I hated the way it looked, and then I covered it in foam again. But then I really loved my horns. I really fucking loved my horns. I, I loved the way they turned out. Um, and I think we're gonna go through a little uh, short uh, time lapse to see that. Yeah, so here they are covered in rope uh, with their base paint on that I was like trying to see if it was gonna work. They are glued on to the Alice band here, I think. Yes, uh, headband. Um, and so I was much happier with the shape, but it's still a little bit off. There was something that was still bugging me. Um, and I fixed that with the next round of foam that went on. Uh, just in comparison, these are the new shape to the old shape. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's much better. It's so much better. Okay, so here featuring Tora is what I thought was gonna be the final horns and I was very happy with them. Um, but I, I guess I wasn't, uh, because I, um, it's still ended up re-adding some more foam. Uh, those are the, the ears, the ears are pretty cute. Um, they sit really well with the horns. Oh, uh, I wasn't happy with how that horn was lifting up. So I was like, nope, I need to fix that. It bugged me and then I did fix it. Okay, uh, here are our first uh, mock-ups for the pants. They are much longer than the ones that I wanted. Uh, again, if you use the, uh, pants pattern that is available at Mode Society, you don't have to really go through. Well, I mean, you're still gonna have to go through a mock-up stage. It's just gonna be much easier for you because you don't have to sit there and try and figure shit out. You can just do it. And I kind of regret that I didn't know those high-waisted pants were there uh, until I actually started doing research for this video. So, hey, um, remember to do mock-ups, kids. Emotional support when you are sewing is very, very important. Um, <laughs> This is this is a real time as well of how long it takes to do the embroidery um, in some spots, um, especially where you have to be a little more careful because it's on a curve or a straight line. 
Um, but hey, look at that! Look at that! Look at it! Look, look at it! Look at it! There's the sleeve! Look at it! And it's all dirty and crusty! Because it's like meant to look old. Ten minutes past midnight on the 22nd of August 2022 and I have finished 408 hours worth of embroidery. <laughs> it is done. It is. I think this video speaks for itself. All right, and here is before I pressed everything together and it, it's, it, the lining is in, the, the lining is in. We don't have our hood on yet, but our lining is in. And that was like such a big part of getting this stupid jacket done. Okay, so when you get to the pants part of Molly, I did include a color guide for what I used to, um, you know, embroider my pants. Try and make your own because your sizes are gonna be different than my sizes because my diamonds are a different size than, because I opted for smaller diamonds to get the same amount of patterns into the design um, than like the bigger square, the bigger diamonds, which ended up into being a lot more work, etc., etc., etc. But um, yes, just keep a color guide with you to know where you should be sewing things and how they should be going. My eye tempt you, my eye tempt you for some cheeky, cheeky match seams on velvet. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Hi, welcome to a sewing lesson with Grandma Ray. Ha, you've been tricked. Uh, lesson in velvet real quick. So velvet is a highly directional fabric. I mean, we know this because <laughs> velvet has what is called a pile, which is the little fur things that you get there. Now you get natural fibers like a cotton velvet. Uh, this is a cotton velvet and then you get shitty polyester plastic thing like this thing which is just pure plastic. Uh, these two... <laughs> we're not gonna get into that. Um, but hey, so the fun, fic, fun, fun fact about velvet um, is that velvet is pretty much like a magnet. When you stitch it, you can either stick it to itself uh, and it'll go nowhere. You don't even need pins to stitch it. Uh, or the exact opposite happens. I actually like kind of test that out by literally taking your two pieces of velvet and having them match grain lines and you'll feel that there is a very like like resistance to the fibers. Uh, and then you can take the exact same thing and turn it on the side and it's gonna go whoop, no drag. Fun fact, fun, fun learning experience. So the way to kind of avoid this happening is by basting everything down. Uh, so what is basting? Basting is when you take a single thread of a like whatever color thread doesn't really matter. I use I use something that is a color that I can see uh, and then you just boop, 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 stitch it down really quick. Nothing like no knots, no nothing. Uh, just to kind of like keep the things together and you like have it match. So that is one of the best ways that you can do stuff like match seams. Like, as you can see, like I've unpicked a bunch of times here because this takes a lot. Um, and yeah, like I and and like matching is fun. Yeah, so just um just know that it takes a while to do the quilting, but it is well worth it because it looks so smooth when it's done if you just just yeah. Google old white ladies and how to quilt. Uh so this is actually how I kept track of which color goes where. I uh had an Excel spreadsheet and then I was like, oh, this color goes here. This color goes here. Uh, so when you sew, really important, you're gonna sew in diagonal lines all the way down. And then you're gonna stitch the diagonal lines to each other so that it looks like this. <sighs> that is five days worth of sewing. The sheer amount of sewing that this stupid project involves. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, ri I, I have sewn for 13 years and this is the project where I was honestly sitting there going, are you kidding me? Do I have to stitch another line? Ugh. But it was worth it, I think, in the end. Uh, here is the test fitting for our, the first one. Look at the pockets, they're on there. Uh, I just want to point out that at this point, uh, the part where the pockets are, that is about 16 layers of fabric, technically speaking, in some spots, not all over, like where the seams are. Uh, for the diamonds, that is 16 layers of fabric just right on my butt um, because of how many times things were fused and I feel like that is overkill uh, because my machine refused to stitch that. My, my machine was like, uh-uh, we're not going to stitch that. So 
Um, pain and suffering. Just that is what this is. It's pain and suffering. This was this was one of the test fittings before we started getting things together. Okay, uh, for the boots, um, I ended up creating a lace-up back um, because it just fit better to what I wanted it to do. Um, so there are laces at the back. It looks kind of naff because I was alone trying to lace myself into thigh-high boots because thotty boots for the win. Okay, so um, when you do finally make your molly pants, the one thing that I would highly recommend doing is in the top layer, um, I actually talk about it in this video if you wanna go through it, uh, add some uh, hook and eyelets to your boots and to your pants because at this point I'd been wearing the pants for the whole like 10 minutes or something and they weren't falling off because they were held in place by hook and eyelets and you should definitely do that too. Um, especially if you do not want to spend the whole day picking up your boots from the floor. Uh, it also passes the squat test if you did add stretch panels. Uh, add stretch pa add stretch panels. R remember how I said that you're gonna end up painting things of, oh, yep, I just kind of wish I didn't, but here we go again. Oh, uh, here we are, uh, recovering it with, um, foam because I hated it. And I think the new texture looked much cooler and cooler horn yep uh, and that is what it looked like when the horns were shaped to my head because I took some foam clay and then squooshed it onto my head and then smoothed it out so that it looked like the horns were coming out of my head and then swords and then, then more painting yay uh, there are almost no videos of the wig styling because I panicked um, and I'm sorry about that. I promise actually for the next project, I made myself promise I was actually going to record things. I've always felt really self-conscious about making stuff. So I'm like, no, I'm going to start actually recording things this time. But hey, uh, as you can see, there is a good like five centimeter gap between where the wig is and where my hairline is. And that's because I used my natural hairline. Uh, I dyed my hair, this matching shade of purple to the wig, um, the day before the convention. Uh, so that is also an option, just dyeing your hair because wigs are expensive and uncomfortable. <gasps> and then there was wig. Yay, wig. That kind of looks cool. And, and here is wig with horns and ears. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's, it works. I mean, it does it does what it's meant to do, and we we have. Uh, and this is what it looked like uh, the day before the con. Um, as you can see, my hair is matching ish. It was one way wash away from being perfect, and um, I just needed to uh, style it in there. But uh, we'll see what it looks like in the day in a minute. Oh, uh, these are also included in the handout. Uh, it is the printouts for these. You can just get the tattoo paper on Amazon or anywhere, and then you can have your own Molly Mock tattoos. So my makeup for the day, um, the first day was predominantly done by my best friend Chev because uh, I put the contact lenses in right at the start uh, and we started getting ready at about 4 a.m. and uh, 5 a.m. sorry, 5 a.m. It was rough, buddy. And then on Sunday for final judging, I uh, did most of it myself and then added the contact lenses in just before um, we finished up for uh, the day. So, yay. And there he is. That's, there's my boy. This is my, this is my boy. It's my boy. Fun fact, you guys. Every Molly Mock cosplayer is absolutely 100% irredeemably insane because nobody in their right mind looks at Molly Mock tea leaf and thinks to themselves, yeah, I could probably do that. Adding more allies, taking more chances, hold your breath and roll. It's Thursday night. All ye critters, come join us, it's time to and just a shout out to some of the amazing cosplayers I saw at Comic Con Africa. Uh, we had we found a Percy. Um, that was just another me photo. We found a Ladna. Uh, we found another Molly. 
it was it was so cool to see and like oh there was a there was hot boy i don't know who the hot boy was but there was a hot boy uh and the cutest little jester she was adorable oh my god she had the cutest um it, guys it was so cute she had this uh fold out umbrella but like not not an actual umbrella it was just the spokes of an umbrella and when she did it there were unicorns on it and so she had like this aura of spirit guardians it was so cute jester had spirit guardians uh it was beautiful and then we get one sassy little stage photo look at that look look at the sass on that man uh i also yeeted a bunch of um <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? Uh, flower crowns into the uh, state. Two of them, to be precise. So if I accidentally hit you in the face, I'm sorry. I literally could not see past uh, my face. So I was had like about a meter of sight ahead of me. I really could not see where I was throwing anything. I know I pointed into the crowd at some point and was like, hey, phone me. I literally do not know where I pointed at. So I'm sorry if, yep, I'm sorry if you didn't like that. But yes, that is it. That is that is that is how we made him. Him. He's made. He's done. So that previous clip was actually filmed by a good friend of mine, Andre from Primal Nerds. He's an amazing cinematographer and video editor. Uh, so go ahead over to his channel and have like a good looky-loo at the amazing showcase of South African cosplayers, which is just phenomenal. I have watched that clip about a hundred times since I've gotten it and ugh. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this 40 minute long build book for Molly. I hope that I was able to help you in some way at least with your own Molly mock build or even another critter character. If you have any questions about cosplay, sewing, pattern making, uh, please feel free to ask and I will try my best to answer them. Hydrate, don't dry drape. I love you guys and stay awesome.